I can't stop reading this book. Since I read the last chapter, all I've done is change my clothes, go outside in my garden, and now I have to get back to it. Because I can't resist. Show me a sign. And Claire Lozette, chapter 33. As soon as Ezra Brewer has taken his rest, we're on our way again. I'm increasingly anxious about returning home. Why did you assist Andrew with the genealogy? I asked. You mean those scribbles I wrote down about the Lamberts and the Skiffs? He signs. You mean you lied? I ask. Of course not. I'm a man of my word, he signs, pretending to be annoyed at my accusation. But, I sign, encouraging him to tell me the whole truth. Ezra Brewer scratches his chin, and the corners of his mouth form a puckish smile. It's true, he signs, that your father's second cousin was deaf as a post, but it's not as well known that her nickname was Patty Cake, if it even was. I erupt with laughter. Patty Cake? Patty Cake Lambert? That's what you wrote? I did indeed, he signs, and that Yaley with his clever ways couldn't tell that he was being fooled. He was not clever, I signed soberly. I know it, he signs. Honestly, Mary, if I had known that that man, what that man had in mind to do to you, I would have chased him back to his schooner the day he arrived. There's something I have to get off my chest before we arrive home. It's different in Boston, I tell Ezra Brewer. They don't sign. They look down on us like we're animals. I've been there, he signs. Watched all their lips flapping, and I don't believe they're a wick smarter than the vineyard folk. Take you. I've been watching you all your years. You've got something in you, girly. Well, some people don't think that's good, I sign. Pay them no mind, he signs. I never do. Since I've never taken a faraway trip off island, I have never approached my home as an outsider from this distance. It looks small. As we come near the shore, I stand on the bow of the black dog, peering through the spyglass. Matthew Pye is gazing back. Standing on a hill, he signs, Welcome, by bringing his arms down from above his head to the middle of his chest. I'm warmed by the gesture. Then I see him jump on his horse and ride off. He must be spreading the news of our return. Will Mama and Papa be on the beach when we dock? I hope Nancy comes too. <clears throat> the hills and the beach look the same. A familiar collection of boats is scattered on the shore with men that I've known all my life hauling nets out of the sea. I can even see the bottom of our sheep farm. The sheep are like squiggles of paint on a winter landscape. Snow covers some of the ground. There are patches of brown turf and thickets of bare oak and fruit trees. The pitch pines have not dropped all their needles. Ezra Brewer slowly steers us toward the beach. He marches the bow till the water is knee deep. And then he turns in seaward and tosses the anchor. Fishermen walk through the icy waters in their winter gear to pull up the cutter safely to the sandbar. I stand still, cold and bruised, my hair wildly blowing like a mermaid's and my cheeks sunburned. I face the shore wearing Ezra Brewer's sealskin coat, with the map of memories tucked safely inside a pocket. I hold on to Smithy until she struggles and leaps to shore. Before Ezra Brewer and the men unload his gear, Papa comes for me. Mary, he signs, brushing his hand tenderly across his cheek. Thank the Lord you're home. He's better than Ezra Brewer at concealing his shock at my poor condition. He breaks into a smile swiping the back of one big hand across his eyes. He lifts me in his strong arms and squeezes. I melt against him. As he carries me to the beach, I see that a small crowd has gathered. But where is Mama? I see her running, wiping her shining blue eyes with a handkerchief and reaching, reaching for me, arms outstretched. Then she is enfolding me in her embrace. When she touches the side of my head, I wince. Mama's hands rise to her throat, shaking. Her lips tremble, but she manages a smile. Really you? She signs. Are you okay? Me, I sign. I'm better now. 
Papa puts me down on the sand and retrieves a blanket. He returns Ezra Brewer's sealskin coat, his only coat. Mama's embrace is soft as velvet. I never noticed her scent before I was taken off the island. It's a combination of rose water, clean wool, and cinnamon. I run my fingers over the fine features of her face and touch her hair. I feel a gentle peal of laughter. Mr. Pye and Miss Hammond approach us and sign, Welcome home! It's reassuring to see their friendly faces. I smile and tell them that it's good to be back. Mama and I walk the beach to the high road with the blanket covering my storm-beaten garments. Nancy races to greet me. She looks me up and down, the way a dog might sniff a familiar bone that went missing. She looks into my eyes. I sign to her. I just want to say, Forget it, Mary, she signs. I've been thinking about all the ways that I could have been a better friend. Don't you dare outshine me and apologize first. I have a lot to tell you one day, I sign. And I have something to tell you too, she signs as we walk. Reverend Lee greets me at the high road. My child, he signs, overcome with emotion and struggling to find the right words in his hands. May we be able to distinguish between the angels and the demons. And may you stay safe in the bosom of your family and community for all your days. I take the hand he offers me and smile up at him. As Mama and Papa and I climb on the ox cart, I look back at the ocean receding under a burnt orange sunset. It's good to be back on my island. Chapter 34. It's a short one, so we'll do a double. As we near the farm, I see Thomas and Eamon fixing the stone wall. The frozen groundswell must have upended the stones. When we pass, they stop working, take off their caps, and wave at me. I wave back and smile. Walking through our front door, I'm overcome, and my knees nearly buckle. Here, there are no locked doors. No labor until my hands and knees are raw. No eating from discarded plates. No being poked and prodded. This is the place where we love, we are loved and laughed, and where we grieved and fought. This is a home. Papa lifts me and carries me to, a ki- to the kitchen. I feel big in his arms. Have I grown that much during my captivity? Or have I just become more conscious of my size and age? Papa sets me down in his chair by the fire. Mama touches my fine dress, now dirty and ripped. What does she imagine? bath, then tea, she signs. While Papa drags out the wooden tub and Mama heats the water in the kettle, I look toward George's bedroom. The door is open, and from a distance it looks as if he just left. Papa exits while I bathe. I feel no shyness stepping out of my clothes in front of Mama, though I wish to shield her eyes from my injuries and gaunt ribs. Gaunt means, like, incredibly skinny, like skeletal skinny. Gaunt. I use whale oil scented with lavender while Mama gently works out the knots in my hair with a baleen brush. She puts a soothing balm on my ears and hands. At the table, I sip strong English tea with cream. Images from my time in Boston flash through my mind. It's hard to shoo them away. They're part of me now as well. Papa opens and closes the front door. Sam comes running toward me and jumps into my lap, his paws leaving marks on my shawl and clean shift, but I don't mind. He licks my face and sneezes. I ease him onto the floor and I sit beside him. Grabbing hold of his scruff, I bury my face in his softness and cry. Mama sits beside me and rubs my back. Papa taps his pipe. After a time, I climb into my chair. Thank the Lord for bringing our Mary home, Mama signs. And thank our dear friend who twice braved the icy perilous cape to bring our daughter to safety and home to us, Papa adds. Amen, Mama signs. I never thought I'd see the day when Mama said amen for Ezra Brewer. She serves my favorite cranberry muffins. I take a large bite, savoring the tartness of the fruit. But my stomach grumbles and aches. Too much grog. Not to mention the contents of Ezra Brewer's larder has temporarily stifled my appetite. 
A larder is kind of like a place to keep um, food. Kind of like a what we might call a cooler. Bed, Papa signs, putting his hands beneath his tilted head. He winks at Mama. As I walk out of the kitchen toward the stairs, Mama places her hands on my shoulders. She turns me around and leads me to George's bedroom. His bedstead and bureau have been polished. New curtains drape the windows, and a new blanket covers the bed. The small desk where he worked has been cleared of his books and papers and replaced with a blank rag paper, a quill pen, and an inkwell. For me, I ask, disbelieving. Miss Hammond says that you have a rare talent in the making of a fine school teacher, Mama signs. I expect you will find an excellent use for her generous gifts. My heart swells. Still, I cannot rest easy in this bed until we clear the air. The things I saw you say my last night at home, I blurt out. I never should have said, she replies. Honestly, Mary, I didn't mean it. I don't even know what I was saying. I thought I lost everything that mattered to me. A cruel lesson taught me nothing could be further from the truth. I want to be a good daughter, I sign. You are, Mama signs. She nods as her eyes fill with tears and she takes my hands. I look out the window. The snow and ice will thaw in a few months. Will the horrors that I experienced melt away too? Mama signs, sleep close by. No one can harm you. Did she sense my thoughts? I hug her for a long time before I kneel on the red braided rug next to my bed. I give thanks to our Lord and Ezra Brewer for bringing me safely home and to Mama and Papa for seeing the best in me. I add Mr. Squints, Dr. Minot, Nora, and the man in the Monmouth cap to the list of people I name in my prayers. I also remember Andrew, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. I place George's map of memories safely on the desk before I slip into bed. I want to stay awake to feel the vibrations of Mama and Papa in the bedroom next door, but I drop into a sound sleep. She's home. <laughs>